And I said, when they call a national day of prayer, you're going to see coronavirus vanish. There are prophecies. There are ten prophecies in this book. There's ten. One of them in chapter 9 is about the day of repentance and other days that need to be proclaimed in order to create unity and to avoid civil war, which is the same thing, isn't it? Civil war comes when there's segregation and separation and disunity and division. So the Lord gave it to me. I'm telling you, the book is a download from heaven. There are things that we've said way ahead of time. Syria, I mean, I can go through many, many more. How many prophetic confirmations do you need to get? So the next thing that I'm going to predict is there's going to be a lockdown. I'm going to prepare you for the lockdown. The lockdown in America and the lockdown in Australia. Let's start with the scriptures, all right? Matthew 24, verse 7, For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. I wish this was the end, but I just believe it's the sign to confirm we are in the zone, we're in the end, but this does not mean it's rapture. I think the rapture has to have the other astronomical signs. The signs in the skies that we were looking at in 2014 and 15 would have been a very good extra confirmation, extra layer of prophecy that would have said, okay, we're in the zone of rapture. We don't have that now, and we won't have it until the 2030s. So for me, we're in the end times. All the preppers are gloating. All the preppers are now smug because they've been prepping for this for a long time, and people are making fun of them. Now they're stocked up with food and water. Hey, I've been preparing for eight years. You see, but the world is going to get freaked out. They're going to get scared because they don't come to church and they don't listen to God. Listen to God. He cares about you. He's not trying to scare you. He knows what's coming. The Bible's the only book in the world that knows what's coming. That's your proof that you're reading God's Word. He says what's coming, famines. So GFC is a, it qualified, qualifies for the famine, right? Financial difficulty. Difficulty getting the usual products that you want to buy. It's called a famine in the Bible. Today, it would be a recession or a depression. Pestilences. And I said all of God's judgments are poetic. Because when you say prophetic, they, people don't get what does that mean. You're just saying it's futuristic. No, no, it's poetic. It makes sense. There's a rationality behind it. There's a logic behind it. And I preach that. I'm not going to preach it to you now. I preach that for an hour at the end of the justice course called Poetic Justice. So it's probably the 12th hour of that course. You need, the church needs to awaken to justice. This is what we're moving towards, is that the whole world is going to find out Jesus is judge. And God has perfect justice. Every little thing he watches. Even if people say, oh, it's not a crime, I'm not a criminal, but they are perverted. They are pedophiles. They are cheats and liars among the Christians. And I'm looking at especially the Christian politicians. You're the worst hypocrites of them all. Trying to get power and you are a criminal or you are a liar. Judgment is coming for that. Is that bad? That's grace for the rest of us. Grace for one side means justice on the other side, doesn't it? The two sides are the same coin. God is both. He's the lion and the lamb. He's the forgiver, the redeemer, but he's also the soon coming judge and king. He's both. We've lost sight of all this, so now I don't know how anybody who doesn't preach the end time and preach curses and judgments interpret the coronavirus. So what is it? If you don't believe there's any more curses on earth because Jesus died on the cross, you don't believe there's any more judgment coming because Jesus died on the cross, what is it? Wake up, people. That's false teaching. We fully believe in mercy and grace, and we fully believe in the judgment and justice of God. We believe he's both. We believe all the Old Testament. We believe all the New Testament. Amen? It's time for a balance. It's time to be balanced. We're not against anybody. We're for everybody. It's just that everybody's against each other when they don't see eye to eye, when they don't see the perspective of the other person. My teacher said this, go, you know, learning the Bible is like climbing a mountain. Everybody, depending on where they are on the mountain, north, south, east, west, altitude, perspective, 
Maybe a tree is blocking you. Maybe you've got a big vista in front of you. You will report a different view from the same mountain. And you will swear the other people who say they see a different thing is a liar. But they're not. They're not liars. Everybody's seeing a different facet, a different side, a different truth. As long as they're honest people, as long as they're interpreting the Bible with two or three scriptures, they're seeing one side that maybe you don't see. So don't content, condemn justice when you see coronavirus coming. This is not a blessing. This is a curse. And I got not just demonetized. I had my only video removed from YouTube. YouTube, tell me, what is it that you don't like? I'm preaching the Bible. God says, you sin, you will get judged. You don't repent, eventually the judgment leads to death and hell. What is it that YouTube doesn't like about this? Is it okay to discriminate? And you won't even know how much discrimination and censorship is going on unless you tune into things like this. And I can't even advertise. Do you know this book that predicted that Trump would say, we need a day of prayer and repentance? This book that's got uh, nine other major predictions. I am not authorized. I am, what's the word? Prohibited. We have been rejected as a ministry to run paid advertising. Pay, like we will give Twitter money, Instagram money. They will not allow, they will not accept payment on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook for us to advertise Trump's unfinished business. What are they afraid of? What are you afraid of? So now we're relying on videos like this to go viral, but they suppress the views. So unless you share it, I never say share, but now I have to say, unless you share videos like these, they don't get out. And unless the people who watch the video subscribe to our ministry or subscribe to us on Twitter or somewhere else, we, we're not going to be able to communicate with each other when they really turn the heat on. And they say, enough of this prophecy stuff. Enough of this. We, we don't believe in this. And this is the hardest thing I find. This is the hardest thing about getting prophecies from God is I get information that can literally save people's lives. And I am shocked at how few people, including Christian leaders, pay any attention. They not only don't pay attention, some of them will fight you while you're trying to save them. I've gone to Christian leaders trying to tell them, don't do what you do. Do this. This is what God is saying. And they will not have a bar of it, as Aussies say. They won't have an iota of it. And then they get in trouble shortly after that. Do you know how many of my friends right now are in trouble? Pastors in Singapore, pastors in South Korea, now it's pastors in America, cannot meet. Because they, they have the big churches, right? And now it's any gathering of over 250 people, you're not allowed. You're not allowed. And it will depend on the country. In Italy, it's all masses canceled. And you've never been on online church? You've never been an online pastor. And I've told people, I've never tried to seek something for me. I, I've shared, I've willingly shared what we've done on YouTube and on social media to other pastors. And I've sat with them and say, have you looked at this? And they said, I have no time. Then a couple of weeks ago, I sat with the same pastor, one of these pastors I talked to. I said, you know, have you thought about social media, you know, reaching people this way? He said, oh, yeah, we've got like a committee gathering together. We don't know anything about this. We really need to catch up. I said, do you remember I sat in the same office and said this to you two years ago? He said, for the life of me, I can't remember that. God sent me to speak to them. And this was a nice person. This is a, a friendly pastor. You wouldn't believe the reaction when you try to give a word of prophecy or when you try to reconcile with someone, you try to give a word from the Lord to someone and they're a Christian leader, how they will fight you and they will literally cuss you out. It's unbelievable. This is the end time. This is, at, at the very least, I think, you better be nice in the end time. This is not the time to play around. This is not the time to act all fleshy. I went through the trouble of telling two false prophets I said, really, you, d you don't want to spread lies about me. You don't, really. You, you, it's not going to be good for you, right? Because I really believe I walk pure and clean, and the Bible says, touch not my anointed, neither do my prophets any harm. And I walk by that. You've never seen me criticize anybody. And I'll get people say, I love Pastor Steve, but I don't like so-and-so pastor. I never respond to that rubbish. 
Never. Every pastor is trying to do their best, and some of them need to catch up on the revelation, on the next move of God. It's not about grace. It's about justice. That's what Jesus is coming to, to do, not to give grace, but to give justice. Some of them need to catch up, but they're on, they're, they're on our side. They're our friends. Unless they cuss you out, okay? Then something's wrong with them. I went and told these, these false prophets. Now we can say they're false prophets. So you really don't want to do that. They cussed me out. They accused me. They were all nasty. And, and I got off the phone with witnesses. And I said, all right, Lord, they're robbing my peace. And uh, I'm not going to take revenge, but I value my peace very much. And God will defend my peace. In six months, both of them were arrested. And that's only one out of the arrests and deaths and many other tragedies that have happened to people who just, they won't listen to God's word. I didn't do it. I didn't say I did it. Nice shirts, by the way. I like those polos. Nice. We got nice polos. Discover ministry polos. People say, why are you selling polos if it's the end time? You still need to wear shirts, don't you? Still need to eat, right? Support the ministry. My goodness, of all the things to do at this time. And I believe, you know, and I'll say this. I believe in these end times, Christians are going to get better. Christians who never thought of giving will start giving. They will, because they'll realize. One thing coronavirus has done is made people think, what's important in life? How much are you going to save for yourself? How much are you going to save for a rainy day? What about the work of the gospel that needs to come to a close? We haven't reached many, many people. And you know what? Now we can reach them through online. And we're, we're one of the best online churches. One of the best because we're on, one of the only ones out there. Other people got their videos up on websites. That's not online church. Church is church. It means if there's a lockdown, you can interact, you can talk. You can do that with me on Patreon. Right now it's Patreon. I wish we had more, but we're developing. I'll give you, I'll give you some news about that. But let me continue. This is what the Bible says. Jeremiah felt this way, felt like how I felt all these years. Jeremiah 20, verse 8 says this in the really easy translation, New English. So these messages from the Lord have made me a household joke. But if I say, I'll never mention the Lord or speak in His name. His word burns in my heart like a fire. It's like a fire in my bones. The famous Translation is, the New King James says, but his word was in my heart like a burning fire, shut up in my bones. I was weary of holding it back, and I could not. I could not. All these years, I preach about the tetrad, about the earthquakes, about the pestilences, and I could just say, you know, I'm tired of this. And they always say, if it doesn't happen the next day, you're a false prophet. If it doesn't happen the next year, you're a false prophet. Yeah, I have a little patience. And I could say, I'll shut up, but I could not because God kept giving it to me. And the day of vindication is here. 2 Chronicles 36, verse 16 says, But they mocked the messengers of God and despised his words and misused his prophets until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people till there was no remedy. And that's a strange thing, isn't it? The wrath of the Lord arose against who? His people. People say, well, if this is judgment, why is it happening in South Korea? There's so many Christians there. Have you gone to South Korea? Have you seen the Laodicean church that is there? They are fussing and fighting. They're divided between the biblical church and the radical, socialist, left-wing, communist, pro-communist church. The church has been infiltrated, if you don't understand this. The best way to destroy anything is to infiltrate it. This is how the liberal party, maybe this is why they take my YouTube videos off, because I mentioned something about politics, but I'm not preaching politics. I'm preaching the Bible. I'm saying that the way that they have destroyed traditional values is that they've intentionally gone into the liberal party and they've sent infiltrators. Radical left-wing infiltrators are in every branch of every electorate of the liberal party, Then when it comes to pre-selection, they select their own anti-Christian, anti-Christ candidates. And you know what I'm talking about. And then the Aussies, when it comes time to vote, says, what's there to vote for? Both sides are the same. Both sides were for gay marriage. 
Both sides are for transgender bathrooms. Both sides are against the church. How did this happen? Infiltration. This infiltration is already successful in Korea. How did all these things happen? Infiltration. So the Bible says that his wrath, the wrath of the Lord, arose against his people till there was no remedy. And we think, well, there could be no judgment in the house of the Lord. The judgment will begin in the house of the Lord. But for a good reason. It's not, he's not upset and uptight. He wants to cleanse the church and the nation. I said in Trump's Unfinished Business, the book, I got it on page 206. I got a heading. You can check it out. Donald Trump, the holiday maker. I'm, I'm going to turn it. I'm going to show you. 206. Donald Trump. Donald Trump, the holiday maker. It's right there. This is not something that we wrote. In fact, this was written last year. It came out in 2020, February. This was written before. He has to do this because it's part of God's agenda. And as many prophecies as he fulfills, the more reward in heaven, the more peace on earth. It's coming. And they see, we have cards that we give out before about the YouTube channel. And anyone in the world can give those cards out because we don't even make cards for ourselves. This is how much we're a body of Christ-minded. We think about the kingdom of God. Even our cards don't point to our church, although at the very last thing, at the end, you can certainly find our church. But we make this to propel to advance the kingdom of God. So we had a lot of cards, we still have, that were YouTube cards. These ones are the Trump's Unfinished Business, 10 Prophecies to Save America card. And I want to make the, the only offer I'll ever make on this. If anyone listening want to get these cards or want to print it for yourselves in your country, talk to us. We'll give you either the cards or the file for free. All right? Maybe donate, donate something for it, and we'll give it to you. Amen? So this is to get the Word of God out because Twitter won't let us get it out. It's ridiculous. You can put the most vile things... You can have such horrible things on Instagram, on Twitter. Twitter will not even censor porn. I was really shocked about that. Sometime I, I had stuff come up, and I said, this is Twitter? They won't censor that kind of stuff, and their ads are not all kosher. But they will not let us talk about this book on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. So how do we do? Well, we'll bypass them. You can get these cards and, and give it to your friends. They can download the book, read it, read it right away. All these prophecies are going to come to pass. But in my deleted video, I said, when Trump declares a day of prayer, coronavirus will vanish, and the secularists, the atheists, will deny it. So now the question is, how will they deny it? And I have a prediction. I predict that coronavirus will go away from America, but people will not give glory to God because... I predict that Donald Trump will call, probably within the next 24 hours, a national lockdown for three to four weeks. That's about 30 days. The secularists will not give glory to God, but will rob God of His glory and will take credit unto themselves and claim that they had successfully contained the virus by the national lockdown. See, there's always, God always gives the option. You want to believe God, you can believe. You want to deny and mock Him, you can. But there will be eternal consequences. Now remember, the lockdown as of this video has not yet been declared. On page 211 of this book, I said, you will find, 10 presidents have called. I give you history, I give you prophecy. I back it up with so many facts. 10 presidents have called for the National Days of Prayer, Fasting, and Repentance. George Washington... John Adams. So when you say separation of church and state, well, hang on. Here are 10 presidents, starting with George Washington, who called for national days of Christian prayer, biblical repentance and prayer. You know, repentance is the first doctrine of Hebrews chapter 6, the elementary doctrines of Christ, repentance, faith from dead, repentance from dead works, faith towards God. It's the number one tenet of faith for Christians. It's not the number one tenet of faith for Islam. It's not the number one tenet of faith of Buddhism and Hinduism. Repentance is the number one thing. So when you call a national day of repentance, you're calling a, a, a Christian holiday. 
George Washington did it, John Adams, James Madison, John Tyler, Zachary Taylor, James Buchanan, Abraham Lincoln, Andrew Johnson, Chester Arthur, and Woodrow Wilson. Then I give you effects, examples of the effects of the National Day of Prayer. When people took it seriously, a, a national leader said, we need to seek Jesus Christ, and then they took it seriously, guess what happened? And I give you history after history, in, in, examples in history. I'm going to give you one. You want to hear? During the American Civil War, President Abraham Lincoln set a day of national humiliation, fasting, and prayer on Thursday, 30th of April, 1863. Many Americans observed the day in prayer and fasting and repenting for personal and national sins. Two days later, Confederate General Stonewall Jackson was fatally wounded in a freak accident by one of his own guards. Come on. Two days after the, the bloodiest war in American history? Two days after prayer? Yep. Two days is all it took. God's like, I was just waiting for you. You're doing it by yourself. I'm just waiting for you to get on your knees and get serious with me. Two months later, the South lost the Battle of Gettysburg. Now, if you've ever studied American history, you know that's it, Gettysburg. That was a major, major turning point. Two years later, the war ended. When a national leader declared a day of repentance, God heard and restored the nation. America can be godly again. Make Australia godly again. We're going to make shirts of that. You can go to our store. People say, why do you do this stuff? It's end time. Because you haven't sent any support. So at least some of the ones that buy the shirts support what we're doing. And it's nice. I like to wear them. They're nice shirts. You should see. We make some nice shirts. It's a nice t-shirt. MAGA. It's got the flag and everything. God will not be mocked. The world will deny all this. They will say the National Day of Prayer had nothing to do with coronavirus being contained. But because it's been declared, I am certain the tragedy, the thing is over for America. Now, Europe, I don't know, because Europe's been anti-Christ and anti-church for a long time. And they're not humbling themselves. They're getting themselves into more pride, and pride goes before a fall. God will not be mocked. Galatians 6, listen carefully. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. I really think much of the Bible can be summarized in this verse. Much of what I have to teach as a parent is, if you do this, you will get that. So, I'm, I'm going to do it for 18 years with four different kids. If you don't do this, you won't get that. If you do this, you're going to get that. How do you know, Papa? How do you know? I just know the future because I'm your Papa. Because I have so many more years of experience, I just know. And that's exactly what God is saying. God has eons more experience than us. And he's saying, children, you keep mocking me in school, I'm going to shut your schools down. How about that for poetic justice? See, I don't know anybody else that's connecting the dots because they don't, they don't even preach about justice anymore. All the dots are connecting for me, one after the other. It's one of the leftist propaganda agenda that they would brainwash our kids. So God says, you know how easy it is for me to shut your schools down? Try me. God will not be mocked. But Christians, we need to pray. We need to know that we have the judicial power of Christ on the earth. When you say you have the authority of God, what are you talking about? How far from the truth we Christians are? Have we lost our authority? Authority to do what? To declare judgments and curses on those who mock God's name. We have the power to throw mountains into the sea. We have the power to say to a tree, uproot and be thrown and don't get back up. We have the power to tell Christian principals and school teachers who mistreat children and mistreat Christian parents. 
better that a millstone be hung around your neck and around your family and you be thrown into the sea. We have that power. And the only way that you can call down that power is that you walk in humility and purity yourself. And I don't understand why it's so hard. It, it really is this. God will not be mocked. Whatever you sow, you reap. If you speak behind people's back, if you oppress other believers, you're going to get sick. You sow, you reap. Why can I say that? Because I've not done that for 25 years and I've not been sick for 25 years. So there's some authority to speak about it. But the Christians who are mealy mouth and, and shy to say that God gives us authority is because they've been violating God's law. They've been speaking behind people's back against God's word and it's against love. You cannot even have your prayers answered if you walk out of love. For faith worketh by love, Galatians 5 verse 6. So then people start to experience problems and judgments and curses in their life and rather than correcting themselves back to it's a simple you reap what you sow, you reap what you sow, you sow, you're going to reap. People say, oh no, this cannot be. So they make excuses and they make other doctrines up. False teachings. There's no judgment anymore. God is not, God only dispenses candies now. It's all candies and, you know, marshmallows. The God of marshmallows is the, the God of much of the church. They say, oh, you're speaking against the church. Yeah, I'm speaking against the church to help it. I'm not tearing down anyone, am I? I'm not naming anyone. I don't hate anyone in the church. I want the church to rise up and awaken. And if I have to sound a little bit, I don't know, different, I guess, different from what you normally hear, so be it. Because we're being vindicated on all these things. Think about the poetic justice. I love this. Think about this. Is there a more sweet vindication to Trump's nationalism and national borders than coronavirus? All the left-wing freaks in Germany and France, they now got, maybe they say, 3-4% coronavirus infection in the country. And they're still pushing open borders. Would you like such idiots to rule over your country? Or would you like a smart man like Trump? Because it's absolutely clear. We're not saying Trump is a good guy. We're not saying anything. We're just saying God picked him and God is using him. So when God picks Saul, even if he seems bad to you, David says, I can't touch the Lord's anointed. But many Christians dare, and they'll speak badly against Trump, they'll speak badly against pastors, they'll speak badly against me. You watch the judgment come. I believe it's on, it, only three months away. You'll see prominent people drop dead. God is not mocked. What does that mean? Don't think you can fool God. Oh, that's very harsh. I'm just reading the New Testament, guys. Don't relegate this to years gone by and Old Testament stuff. This is Galatians. God is not mocked. Do not be deceived. What does that mean? Many must be deceived. Many in the church must believe there's no sowing and reaping anymore. It's all gone. I get marshmallows all day. I get, what are our, I get Tim Tan every day from God. See, nobody knows what I'm talking about in America. Tim Tan. Like, like death by chocolate biscuits, they are. I eat one and I get pimples. I don't know what's inside of them, but they definitely, it's not a theory. I, I know they give me pimples, but they do, they do taste good. They do taste good. Half, half. In the tribulation, cut them into like thirds and share them. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that will he reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, and he who sows of, to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. You will reap what you sow. Simple. If you sow love, forgiveness, grace, you will reap God's love. And in God's love is contained protection, healing, blessing, all these things that people are praying for, you don't get it because you never sowed anything towards it. Like sowing matters. Now, here's the, the thing that I've found that's amazing, is when you don't know what to sow, when you think, I'm not sure how to go par for par, one for one on this, 
you just give an offering and name it that. When there's not a specific physical thing that you think you can sow, just sow the thing that represents your energy, your time, your talents, and name it that and say, look, I'm sowing towards this. I'll tell you, I'll tell you something. Can I say? Can I say, Zoe, what you want to sow today? Can I say? Zoe did this, and I nearly didn't let her bring it, but here's her seed. She said, Papa, I have $50 for God. Now, I, I said, that's a lot of money. Why are you sowing $50? She said, I want God to answer my prayer. I said, I'm pretty sure you're going to get God's attention. <laughs> what is your prayer? And she said, I don't want you to travel. And you know that she, she hasn't even sown it yet. This was heard by God. I have a major trip to several nations. I've been communicating with people. I've been setting up means. I can't go. Because one child, how is she going to sow? Man, she gave a big seed for a child. It's a 12-year-old child. And said, I name my seed. Now, this is not name it and claim it. This is just pure childlike faith. Nobody even taught her such things. We didn't teach her a prosperity gospel. It's basic stuff. If a kid gave this to you as a parent, you'd be like, honey, what do you need? What do you want? Up to the half of my kingdom, what do you want? It's a normal thing. How are you going to get God's attention? So you learn to sow, and then you reap. You sow, you reap. That's all we're teaching you as a parent when you grow up in a, in a house. That's all we're teaching you as a pastor as you grow up in the house of God. But I tell you, even the leaders of the church world don't believe this, don't get it. That's why the Bible says, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. You will not fool God in this one. You talk behind people's backs, Christian leaders. You're going to reap. You're going to reap. And the Christian watchers who talk behind Christian ministers' backs. Am I rejoicing? No, but it's vindication. It's the way that it is. So not a surprise to me that South Korea it has a major out outbreak. Now, do I have friends in South Korea? Yes, I do. I have many wonderful ministers there. But I also know many people who just go to big churches, never would step into a prayer meeting, never would pray, never would evangelize, never would share the name of Jesus to anybody. Christianity is socializing. It's a club. Puts the name of Jesus to shame. If you sow love, you reap love and all the things that come with love. You sow lies, you will reap lies against you. Simple, right? What are lies against you? Anything the devil says about you is a lie against you. A sickness is a devil's lie against you. Cursing, betrayal, disapproval, legal accusations, financial problems, rejections from counsel. Why do Christian schools and Christian ministers and churches get all of these rejections. We get approval, approval, approval. Why do they get rejections? Because they've sown lies somewhere, so they reap lies. But they don't believe this stuff. They don't believe that this applies to them, sowing and reaping. You sow injustice, you will reap injustice, I guarantee it. But the secular world pushes this deception that you sow and nothing will happen, especially if you sow something intangible, invisible, hidden from view, like an in, inner attitude. Can I, can I be honest? Can I be honest? Attitudes of Christians. This will apply to Americans. I, I find it shocking that divorced Christians withhold children from each other. Divorced Christian parents will fuss and fight like heathens going to hell. Will fight in divorce court, will fight each other over Christian children. Is despicable and it's going to be judged. And people who favor this kind of stuff, who, who approve this kind of stuff, their children get judged. And I've seen this. I'm not saying it like I'm pronouncing something to hurt people. I'm not. I'm just telling you the future. I'm telling you it's going to happen. I didn't cause it. I'm not making it happen. I watched over the years, I watched this. I, I give you a, a real example. This is why I know this. Sowing and reaping. You, you reap what you sow. I watched Christian ministers who made fun of divorced people, right? Christian ministers. Because back 10, 20 years ago, if you're divorced, you can't be a deacon, you can't be an usher, you certainly can't be an ordained 
elder, a minister. So this was the kind of legalism that was in the Australian church. So I watched these. These are my friends. I watched them as they mocked people and said that. 20 years later, all their children divorced. I don't mean all their children. I mean all their cases. They have a divorced child in their family. And guess what? Suddenly it's grace. God restores all things. It's okay to be divorced and serve God and preach in the pulpit and serve the communion. I mean, it's good that you believe now. It's good now that you understand that there is no unpardonable sin other than blaspheming the Holy Spirit. But you use the pulpit to condemn and judge people in such a way, then you reaped what you sowed. Nobody's to blame. Did I cause it? I didn't cause it. I'm just saying it's coming. God is not mocked. Everything that has happened in secret will be reaped in the end time. That's what the end time is about. It's harvest time. It's the end. When you plant, you fertilize, you water, you come to the end, it means the fruit has ripened. We're in the age where all the fruits are ripening in front of us. The bad fruits, the good fruits. So all I'm saying is why not sow good things? Why not be a little bit nicer during coronavirus lockdown? It's coming. You're going to be locked down. You're not going to be making money. You're not going to be going out. In Trump's Unfinished Business book, I talked about 10 injustices that must be corrected before Jesus comes. And the church must learn justice before he comes. Because he comes, and we're going to welcome him as the judge of the earth. And I say 2020 is the year of justice. I don't say it's the end. I say it's just the beginning of the year of justice. And you should hear that in a good light because justice means restoration for you. You've been wrong. Restoration is coming. Victory is coming. God will not be mocked. God will not be mocked. Any Christian leader that's perverted justice, that are pedophiles, that preach pharisaically will be punished this year. Coronavirus will be one way. Oh, Pastor Steve, why do you keep saying judgment in the New Testament? No judgment in the New Testament. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17, I believe is in the New Testament, written by the first pope. Don't throw stones at me. I'm not Catholic. I don't really believe that. I'm just saying. A lot of people believe that. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Judgment will begin in the house of the Lord. God will have his way. Left-wing politicians and policies will not have their way. They'll be judged. They've been trying to ban the Bible, harass parents' rights to teach their children at home, brainwash kids with sexual theory and pink communist propaganda, violating God's day of rest. God's judging them all now. The school lockdown is simply a way of telling everybody, you're all going to go back to homeschooling for a while. See, in Australia, they've been trying to shut down homeschoolers. Now what? Now you'll all be crying to homeschool. Please homeschool us. Homeschooling is a right of Christians and of other parents who so choose. And we warn you. We told you so. But you wouldn't believe us, so now God says, I'm taking the kids back home. Church lockdown is another vindication of something I've been saying that online church is a right. It's a privilege. And I tell pastors, come on, get on social media, become an online pastor. And they thought that that, that was like almost sacrilege. Now in Korea, Singapore, their church services are shut down. They're in big trouble. They can't collect their tithes. And now they're scrambling to find out how to do what I've been doing. If we don't meet here next week, no big deal. You know where to find me. You know where to send your tithes and offerings, and you can even contribute. It's not just videos and money. It's real online church. Ministry is happening online. We can continue to touch the world together, doing many things. But, you know, I've been saying this for years. I say we need to develop an online church platform. We should have had it ready. We don't have it ready. Why? Because we've not had any major pastor or major church contribute. All the contributions have been from individuals, and it's helped us to work on a very skeletal, part-time basis. I've got three developers working to headhunt just three developers, trying to fight Facebook, Twitter, and, and, and YouTube and all this with three people. I need to 
employ them full time. They're at least $100,000 per year ahead. That's $300,000 a year just to get a skeletal staff up for one year. And we could have an online church or clean social media with that kind of staff. But we don't even have that. And I bet you any of the mega churches listening that are now scrambling to do online church, each of them will spend no less than forty to 50000 each. Each. And you think about hundreds, thousands of churches that are scrambling to do online church. Why didn't we pool the money and work together and we could have had something that would have been formidable? But they refused to work together, so then God forced each of them to see the need for online church. But I wish you'd all stop spending the money, pull the resources together, and do something. Like, you don't need a thousand Facebooks. None of them would take off. You need one Facebook to take off. You need one clean online platform. Not too churchy, not religious, but clean. That's pro-Christian, pro-conservative. It's never going to censor Christian material. We need one platform because many won't work. Anybody listening out of all the pastors and the churches out there with, with budgets in the millions? One church could, f- could foot this bill, but they, don't do- they have not done it yet, so I don't know what to say. The church is in a lockdown so that they could all go learn to do online church like we're doing. Lastly, they're going to be in a national lockdown. Probably will be declared in the next 24 hours in, uh, in America, and then it will be um, in Australia. Because we are, if I may say, we are a sheep nation. Whatever America does, we will follow. I want every Christian leader to be in parliament, but it doesn't seem like they act on any principle. You can't save Asia Bibi from Pakistan, and you've got this beautiful, gorgeous country that, that should be open to persecuted Christians. You can't even say Asia Bibi, persecuted, imprisoned, female, brutalized uh, Christian in Pakistan. We can't open our arms. I just don't understand that. Maybe somebody understands politics better than me, but I don't understand that. But Trump will get on the phone to Erdogan and say, I'll crash your lira if you don't let Andrew Brunson, the pastor, out of jail. I will crash your currency. And he did it. The lira went like a waterfall. And then Erdogan says, okay, have Andrew Brunson back. Then he says, come to the White House and pray for me. That's a Christian. Again, this is going to answer a big question. People say, Pastor Steve in Australia, why do I preach about America so much? Because I have great hope. Whatever happens in America is going to happen here. When all the bad stuff like the transgender bathrooms happen in America, boop, it happens here. But when Donald Trump says, no more of this, suddenly, boop, no more of that here. So it's, so it's a very simple formula for me. If I'm going to put my resources into something, I'm going to pray that America gets saved and make America godly again, then the rest of the world will get better. And then we can all whine and moan about how bad America is like internationals and overseas people do. But in the end, we'll watch your movies, we'll buy your food, we'll buy your clothes, we're going to follow your customs and we're going to follow your laws. It's the way it is. So I live in reality, so I want Australia to be godly and great. And if our politicians have no spine and they won't act on Christian principle, then I'm going to target the American politicians, some of which will do something about it. It's just simple. My life is too short to try to do everything, right? So I I go for the highest impact, and we're having it. So national lockdown. Why is this? You're going to hear this first for the first time. I believe that the national lockdown will happen because it will be an enforced It will be just like the Bible. You see, the Babylonian captivity happened because for 490 years, the Jews refused to rest. They refused to let the land rest. They said, we're too busy, we're too important. What we're doing is just cannot rest. Forget about the religious stuff. Forget about going to church. So God says, because of that disobedience for 490 years, I'm going to claim all the Sabbaths that are owed to me and owed to the land that you've been overworking and the animals that you've been overworking. I'm going to claim it all in one shot. So you go to enforce rest 70 years. It's called the Babylonian captivity. Every Jew listening to me knows what happened. But America is a Christian nation that refuses to worship. America is a Christian nation that refuses to go to church. How do you think God will treat this? That Americans have been ignoring his rest for so long, 
They don't read the Bible. They don't go to church on God's day of rest. Christians refuse to stop playing with their computers. They're surfing on social, dating, and gaming apps. And they become hypocrites who tell their children to believe God and go to church, and yet they won't even rest once a week. So I think God says, let's give it a try, 30 days of enforced rest. You're going to stay home and think about what you've been doing with your time. You can't go out. No footy, no beer, no sports. God has given the world. You know, the world used to be in slavery for thousands of years. Then came Christianity that says, we're going to take the Sabbath rest Saturday. We're going to add our own rest Sunday. We're going to give two days of rest to the entire world. And it's for God. It's so that you can enjoy church. Spend time with the people of God. Learn the Bible. Read the Bible. And we said, thank you very much. We're going to the footy. We're going to go do our own thing. You don't think that's going to get judged in the year 2020? If I am not wrong and this is the year of justice, enforce Sabbath. I'm looking forward to it. Lock me down. Lock me down. I want to spend time with my family. I want to spend time with God. I want to spend extra time in prayer. I want to have online church. I'm ready. I'm the biggest online church in Australia. Thank you very much. Yeah. We got more views than any other church in Australia as a church. For what? Not for us. Not, it wasn't for me to boast. It was all the time I kept saying, pastors out there, work with me. Let's make a church online platform. Not for me, not for Discover Church, for everybody. Let's do it. Now I bet you God's got your attention. Now we can do it together. Let's do it during the lockdown. Let's do it. God will claim his Sabbaths. When Americans and Australians are in lockdown, you will suddenly find time for God and family. Not hobbies, not footy, not sports. Time for God, time to come to church, time to give to the gospel, time to fund evangelism, time to fund online missions. So we are helping build clean social media. We're building a, helping, we'd like to help build a church in Thailand. We're building a goat farm evidently in Bangladesh now. One of our board members going there to check it out. We're building a sustainable business in India. And we're building our own Discover Ministry Center right here in Melbourne, Australia. How many things would you like to build? Let's do it. Now that God's got your attention, let's do it. Let's use our time and our money for God in the end time. I am looking forward to the lockdown. I believe there will be six instant benefits to the lockdown. Number one, vindication of nationalism and national borders. Finally, we're not going to be like Germany and France. We're going to respect borders. God made nations. Each nation is supposed to be ruled by its own government, not ruled by a globalist, communist elite. Number two, everyone during this lockdown will finally practice good hygiene. I cannot stand it when men leave the toilet and don't wash their hands. Then they touch the doorknob. Now what does it matter for the rest of us washing our hand if we touch the doorknob? We've just touched your feces. Is, then, then you touch money, coins, you hand it out to everybody. Then you touch your phone. Then you want to shake hands with me. No thanks. I'll fist bump you. Today, like I said, I did a foot kick for the first time. The air quality is going to get better and cleaner in many places, including China. I saw a photo of, I don't know, it was Wuhan or where, but in China, for the first time, there was blue sky, not Photoshop. Blue sky, thanks to coronavirus lockdown. Number four, people will discover the joy of working from home. The economy was going that way, and I think it's a good thing. The world economy is going to change. Your bosses are going to see the benefits of you working from home. You better set your computers up, your workstation, and learn to work from home. There are some jobs you cannot work from home. I understand. You, you're a serviceman at the petrol station. You cannot do that. Okay, fine. But you can rest. I will enjoy quality time with my wife and my four children, and we will have a nice time together during the lockdown. I look forward, number five, I look forward to seeing more people 
speaking about the benefits of homeschooling. Uh, when the kids are at my home during lockdown, I will give them homework. They will have assignments and book reports to do. Number six, I look forward to the lockdown because I believe it's part of the trend to decentralize. Decentralization is what we're moving towards in the end time. That's why social media has become decentralized communication. Nobody was supposed to control it. But then Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube are robbing us of the decentralized structure, and now they're censoring and controlling based on keywords and things like that. So that's not decentralization. We need decentralized uh, church, schools, government, because that's what we're moving towards in the millennium. In the millennium, no one will control the Bible. Everyone can get a revelation, can, can wake up and get a tweet from Jesus, but it won't be Twitter. This is now the time to repent and put your faith in Jesus Christ as healer and as savior. This is the time to examine your hearts and act nice towards your fellow human beings. Christians, if I can say, if you're fighting over anything, stop. You're fighting over inheritances, stop. You're fighting over your, I don't know what, children from some estranged partner, stop. If you're defaming Donald Trump and you don't want to get judged, stop. It's clear you're wrong. You need to be humble enough to know He's the only one that's declared a national day of repentance. There's nobody else that would have done that in the Democrat Party. So unless you want to be judged, then carry on with such injustices. But I would recommend that you act Christian in the last days. The end times are upon us. God will not be mocked. You will reap what you sow. If we sow repentance and prayer, we will see coronavirus go away from Australia. And we sow lies and pride and oppression Sickness will not go away, but sickness will be very close to our doors. It will come upon those Christians. So what are you going to sow in the end time? Let me close by saying Galatians 6. We started out with this. Let me read to you what it actually says in context. Galatians 6, verse 6. Let him who is taught in the word share in all good things with him who teaches. It starts off by saying, you need to support the ministry. Share. If you get good teaching from someone, you should be sowing towards that. People say, oh, I sow to charity. It doesn't say that. Who teaches you the Bible? Share with that person so they can keep teaching the Bible. It's not the same as the social welfare gospel. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, and he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Here's what we do. And let us not grow weary while doing good. Let us not grow weary while doing good. Let the world be scared. Let people punch each other out for toilet paper. We're not going to do that. We're not going to fight for toilet paper. There are other ways. If you don't know, call me. I'll tell you the other ways, okay? <laughs> We're not going to fuss about this stuff. Amen? We're going to be nice in the end time. We're going to be extra kind. God expects kindness. Do you know that God cursed the Moabites and the Ammonites? You remember that? They didn't break any Aussie law. You couldn't fault them for a law-breaking thing. What did they do? God says, I curse the Ammonites and the Moabites to the 10th generation. Don't even come to my church. Because you did not meet my people with bread and water. God is so just. His justice is so pure. Anybody who hasn't even given you bread and water, God says, I curse them. And meanwhile, you're worrying about, yeah, but they mistreated me in this way, and I don't know if anyone knows about it. And God knows if they didn't even give you a cup of water. God says, I'm angry at that. You could, you could make peace. You could, be, you could reconcile and be nice, and you didn't do it. God says, I'll judge you for that. So what did I say? Don't be weary in doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, lockdown is the opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. Hey, while you're in lockdown, read my book. Send an offering to some missionary. You don't know who? Send it to us. We'll send it to the missionaries. Talk to us online. Come on Patreon. Discuss. I'm discipling and mentoring people all the time on Patreon. I can't do it on YouTube because we get a thousand comments and a lot of them are trolls and rubbish. But on Patreon, we're doing it. Come and have online church with me anywhere, anytime. We're ready for you. We're ready to continue living as Christians through the end times. 
Aren't you glad? Amen. So God bless you, and keep looking up. Look up, look up, yeah.